Okay, this is the TPM subsystem update, and and I'll discuss about about things that have happened since since the kernel summit 2017. So this is kind of yearly update for TPM. TPM in nutshell is, is, is a secure co it's a it's an embedded coprocessor that provides different tools for for anchoring the privacy of the system. And it's it's implemented either as as a software module running in some trusted environment like like Trust Zone or SGX or or management engine. <laughs> Or, or as as a, as an external chip that is connected through some some common bus like LPC or I2C, and and essentially it provides a key storage and 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 platform measurement functionality and ways to ways to sign this this measurement and 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 attest the validity of the system. The platform me measurement is based on, on, on these, these registers called platform configuration registers. They, they only support extend and read operations, so you can, you can hash a new data to them, but you, can, you cannot set, set them or clear them while, while the system is running. And, and, and they, they can be used, used, to, used to measure every stage of the boot in a way that, that the previous stage measures the image of the next stage before, before letting it run. And of course, the first stage must be stored in, in very protected memory so that it cannot be tampered. The TPM is passive by itself, but 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 I, I, I either the either the software that gets invalid measurement from from the next stage image can can perform perform some actions like like terminate the boot or or the encryption key inside the TPN can be can be sealed to specific PCR values so that if you get invalid measurement, you cannot unseal the disk encryption key. Remote attestation is essentially a procedure where, you, where, where the TPM signs, signs these measurements using, using a known certificate that is known to the other party, and a re remote party can, can, can then verify this, these measurements using the public key from the certificate. And that, that way the remote party can know whether the system is in, in a valid or invalid state. Well, here, here's, here's a re quick recap of the TPM development history. It began in the 90s. And, and, and the TPM1 one, one standard reached its, its final point in 2009. It had, so, it, it had some limits like, like only fixed encryption algorithm and, and, and it did, did not support, for example, symmetric key encryption. These, these features were added in two, TPM2.0 that is not backwards compatible with the TPM1. And, and, and these days, These, these days, TPM2 is becoming like, like, like the de facto standard. TPM1 point devices are quickly disappearing. Okay, here, here are, are, are the highlights of the recent development within one year. We have added validation code for TPM header, for, mainly for the underruns and overruns of the received data compared to the heater and, 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 and we have added event lock support for UEFI support. A year ago there was only support for, for 
for device tree based systems. And then there's been some performance update to the, to the TPM TIS driver that is commonly used with the, with the discrete TPMs and, and, and self-test. For, for this, we have kind of increased the resolution of the timing when we pull, pull the TPM. And in self-test, we run it now like asynchronously. So we put it to run, but do not, do not wait that it completes, but, con but instead continue the system initialization. Okay, so the event log is essentially a log maintained by or or written by the by the reboot software like like BIOS, and and it contains co contains entries for every 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 PCR extension, and and it can be used to debug P debug the system if, if PCRs, PCRs have invalid values, so w where, where did, did it go wrong and so forth. Or in some up, if application requires, you can combine it with the final PCR values, you, that you, you, get, you, get, you, you can get signed from the, t, from the TPM in order to get the trusted measurement log. Because, because the log given by the BIOS itself is untrust, but if you if you know the final if you have signed signed quote of the final values you can, by combining these those two you can you can have like fully fully trusted log and and the way we we implement the event log in in UF, UEFI and environment is by is by copying the log from the from one EF, EF, EFI table before calling exit boot services. In in TPN 1.2, there was there used to be a CPI table that can, could be used to get the clock, but that doesn't exist on TPN 2.0. So we have we have to use a different strategy. Okay, so there there was also like a huge vulnerability that was this covered by, by Jeremy Boone of NCC this year. And, and, and the I, basic idea is that, that while, 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 while the chip makers have done lots of research and development on making, making chip itself tamper resistant, usually you can, you can spoof, you can, you can spy and tamper the bus where it's connected, and and in many cases, not all, but but at least in some cases, the the TPM is actually a actually, actually a dot, daughter board that that you can attach to the motherboard. So it's it's relatively quick operation to add add a, an interposer device between the TPM and the bus. So it's it's a physical attack. And, and Jeremy wrote a white paper and, and created a prototype device and associated software that can be found from GitHub. And, and, and it can be used to spy, spoof, and corrupt the traffic between host and TPM. So we, we started to take some steps to protect against TPM Genie. We already have these, these, these validations for buffer overruns and underruns, that, 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 that is protection against corruption. And, and then there's a patch set that is currently under review by, by James Bottomley and, and and it, the basic idea in that patch set is that, that both TPM and the host side create a public key pair. And, 
and then use encrypted salt to, to derive the session key and and and, and establish establish an authenticated and encrypted channel between the TPM and host by using HMAC session and that encrypted salt. But yeah, these patches are currently under review. But I, I, I think they will be eventually merged. As, as they Suffer pointed me in the hallway correctly. This this is only, in a way, a partial solution because it only protects protects the bus between the TPM and host. But but potentially, a physical attacker could could have abilities with some some more advanced interposer device to also spy spy the main memory which would endanger the host side, but, but maybe in future we could use technologies like, like Trust Zone or, or SCX to solve that. But this is this is right step forward anyway. Okay, questions? Please, questions? First, uh, thank you. Uh, you just uh, spoke about physical attacks against TPM. Yeah. What I wanted to uh, to check if if there are any uh, support on the hardware level to uh, clear the memory or to clear the content of those chips if the box is physically opened. You mean the TPM or you, you mean the TPM or the yeah, the TPM, for instance. I, I think it depends on the chip, but yeah, generally I, I think they should have ways to clear them. Okay. So if... But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expert on that area, so... Okay, thank you. I guess I'm not entirely clear about the question. Are you concerned about the contents of the TPM if somebody opens the box? Is that the question? Uh, yeah, I'm asking the question. Are you the, well, the TPM is self-contained. So if you open the box, right, you, the chip, all the keys are inside the chip itself or inside a, an integrated TPM or in trust zone. You open the box, supposedly they have tamper protection, like most of the discrete TPMs. You decap them and they, they clear their... Okay, okay, sorry, I, I misunderstood the question last time. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. even yeah, the, if you the open TPMs the boss, are, you cannot the, really really read anything yeah, outside, the, out of the TPM. None of the keys are exposed to memory. They're all protected by the TPM itself. They, they have, the chips have like extensive measures for, for tamper protection, but but in, in DEF, was it in Black Hat or DEFCON for some of the chips, this, 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 this protection has been broken out, but it's, yeah, they are constantly developing, the manufacturers are constantly developing better methods for, for tamper protection, yes. And actually, one thing I forgot to mention is, please, if Hora asks a question, introduce yourself. Just, I think it will help networking and things that people know where to find you after if you want to discuss more. Please, next question. Yeah, uh, this has been from uh, Intel, and I've been working on virtualization uh, for uh, actually one of the tasks for TPM virtualization. So my question is, do you know if there is a uh, TPM compliance test suite so that um, for people who can uh, write a software TPM from a TPM or virtualized TPM, then they can use a kind of uh, to, uh, test suite to make sure our implementation uh, comply with the uh, TPM 2.0 specification. As far as I know, TCC has one, but maybe, maybe, uh, yeah. The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. That yeah, I I haven't used it myself, but but I I know that one exists. You can get it from TCC. From from what? TC, the TCC. Last, uh, uh, Trust computing. Yeah, you yes. mean they provide a test uh, test suite to. I 
Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. I didn't know. I, I'm not aware of that. My name is Angel Stilanov. I'm working at SideGround Hosting. Uh, we are a hosting company which pays uh, a lot of attention on our, on our customer security. So we are using TPMs. And my specific question is uh, why you keep all the source codes and all the tools and everything about TPMs closed? It uh, seems more like security through obscurity rather than uh, making the software running inside the TPM stable and reviewed by the community. Why? So can you... Why, why don't you share the source code with the community and to running inside the TPM and to... We don't know. Nobody knows. All right, you mean the TPM implementation itself? Yeah. Well, that's a question that I really cannot answer because I just, I, I work on a different side. I, I, I develop support for, for TPMs in Linux. I, 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 I don't really have answered that question. So is that the TPM implementation? Yeah. Okay, is is somewhere available the source code of trust zone running inside the TPM? So Mark Rutland, um, Linux security, whatever. Um, there are a ton of TPM implementations out there, so it's really going to depend on your system vendor, and you'd have to speak to them to try and poke who, whoever provided them with their TPM, whether that's firmware or hardware, and then get for the hardware implementations the the source code for that. It's, there's, there, there, yeah, it's a standard. There are many implementations out there. Even, for, even on the trust zone side, there are tons of potential implementations of TPM that might be using uh, different TEs. They might be custom built for particular socks. So you really need to talk to the system vendor to try and get that rather than the like, architecture vendors. So best to look in the TPM implementation that Microsoft posted in the public for the spec. Okay, but they have uh, specification. They don't have uh, specific implementation. And actually, there are so many um, versions and revisions of the uh, TPM software running uh, out there in the fields that actually nobody knows what has exactly inside his TPM. And nobody knows, has anybody from the community reviewed this code, actually? Right? I guess that's probably indeed a question to a vendor, so it's for you. Hi, uh, Luke Hines from Red Hat, and I'm relatively new to TPM, so this might be a rudimentary question. But um, I've been trying to learn more about the event log, and um, specifically, is this something that's generated in the kernel, or is it like a vendor-specific implementation? So they, you know, they populate these PCR entries and then create the event log. I, I'm not able to track down, it seems a bit elusive, this event log, how I can maybe generate one or, or, or obtain one to be able to look at the uh, a measured boot. Yeah, well, it's, it's generated by the firmware or BIOS. I see, I see. And it's, of, of course, completely untrustworthy. But, but, but since you can get the final measurements from the TPM and you can get them assigned, you, you, can, you can then kind of replay it and check if, if they match the final values and then you know it, whether it's, it's tampered or not. Understood, yeah. And so do, do the, um, the BIOS manufacturers, do they work with various other vendors to know the, the good signatures for a particular object, or is it like a root of trust? You have, you have your initial measurement, and then the others are. This might be simple TPM stuff. Perhaps I need to, to read the manual, but I'm finding it quite hard to get the information. 
I don't think the, there's there's any publication of good measurements. Understood. Okay. I think if I remember right, Matthew Garrett was proposing something like this, but I think was it for the OS images? I don't remember. So I'll, I'll keep running from here. So hi, Carl Daniel Heifinger. Um, one question, you mentioned the TPM Genie coming out uh, last year, I think, or one year ago, roughly. Um, the talks about attacking the bus to external TPMs and publications about that have been existing since more than three years ago. So what took you so long to address this? It's been three years. And only when somebody starts releasing hardware, people start to care about the attack. It doesn't really sound secure to me. So I'm not sure if I completely understood the question. So do you, do you think that the measures that we are taking do not solve the problem or? No, I think they are two years too late um, because, um, well, the countermeasures only started being implemented after the release of the TPM Genie. But the attack itself, attacking the bus, has been public more than three years ago. So what happened in the two years between somebody published uh, possible attacks and um, somebody released the TPM genie? So n apparently nobody cared. Uh, there were some mailing lists uh, carrying this. I don't know if that was a scientific publication, but some ma mailing lists carried this. Yeah, well, 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 the corruption protections were landed like, like before, before the conference where, where TPM Genie was repre represented, the, the spoofing side, well, it's, it's a non-trivial problem. It, ha it just has taken this time to find, find a solution that, that all the parties can agree with. So it, it, it just has been slow. I'll, um, I'm Monty Weiser, by the way, from General Electric. I'll answer the question about the event log. Um, NIST uh, has a draft out there, 800-155, which is going to, it's a draft right now. Uh, TCG is currently working with NIST, TCG, the organization that defines the TPM, is working on revising and making that draft final and producing a requirement for the OEMs to publish the expected event logs for their firmware. So that's expected at the end of this year, maybe beginning of next year. More questions? So the thing about this attack against the TPM chip was that Linux, Linux is currently uh, Linux default installations from distributions don't use TPM for anything. So attacking a TPM chip gains the attacker nothing because it's just easier to attack the PC or bus or whatever other buses there are in the Linux system. And <clears throat> what I like to have know is when the vendors will start actually using the TPM for something useful like providing encryption keys for hard drives or validation system installation other than just the kernel and modulus because the current Linux Secure Boot system is just useless. It gains you nothing. It gains you no security. Well, it's being used, but not, but not, not that much in general purpose PC computing. It's, it's widely used in data centers. It's, it's used in, well, it's used in Chrome OS. So, but yeah, well, well, yeah, that's true that the uses are more like application specific at the moment. So, so, so it's, it's more, more used in industrial yeah. level than, than in, in consumer level. And Windows BitLocker uses the TPM by default if it's there. That's the default configuration if the TPM's there. Is to seal the BitLocker, the disk, full disk encryption and BitLocker inside the TPM. And that was the original use case. More questions? There are no more questions. I guess we will.
have the first thing, Yarkov of a tool. 